Hey guys, Mods are here, back with another video for you guys, and wow that glare, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, back with another video for you guys, and I just want to say a very big sorry, uh, the last, hasn't been a video in the last four to five weeks. Uh, my partner and I have been absolutely flat out towards the end of August, early September with some uh, family functions, friends function, things like that. Uh, and we also just uh, finalised and set our date for our wedding for next year, and we've kind of been a bit flat out busy organising all the initial stuff we had to uh, for that. Uh, on top of all this, my grandfather landed himself in hospital very uh, recently and uh, with some pretty serious, um, pretty serious things, um, unfortunately, and um, he, he's, he's not doing too great. So uh, we kind of had a bit of downtime to sort of, uh, you know, work through that, things like that. And uh, on top of that, um, I end up having an issue when I actually want to do film a video uh, about two weeks ago, I fractured one of my wisdom teeth, which put me in immense pain, and I had to go in and have uh, see a dentist uh, very quickly, basically, the very next day, because I was in a lot of pain. And uh, that kind of put a halt to filming, because I couldn't talk, uh, <laughs> for obvious reasons, so uh, it wasn't too great. But finally back and I thought I'd do uh, a really cool video for you guys. I haven't had time to sort of go through and finalize the video, like a uh, video card fi uh, videos that I'm looking at doing at the moment. Uh, I just haven't had time to go through and, and re-script them and, and change them. Uh, so, but today I thought I'd do something rather fun and uh, do a office tour. Um, sort of just show you around my, my office here. Um, talk about some of the bits and pieces that I've got around. Uh, some of the games, some of my music, so you get a bit of a flash into the history of my uh, my teenage years of music, uh, and uh, talk a little bit about a couple of video cards, my workbench, uh, or desk, it's not really a bench, um, talk a little bit about my retro system and, and the state that it's in at the moment, and yeah. So without further ado, uh, let the office tour begin, and uh, I'll see you at the end. Alright guys, so let the office tour begin. Um, so yeah, as you can probably see, this is a very small office. Uh, there is really not a huge amount of room in here. Um, I would say this used to be like a nursery or something like that for, you know, the owners previously. Um, I don't know. But yeah, this is just the, the, my tiny office space that, I've, uh, that I work out of. Uh, so let's sort of go around the room and pick out a few things. Now I do apologize to start with if the focus is going to be a little bit off sometimes. I'm trying to use manual focus because autofocus is for chumps and it's really shit. So yeah, I guess so I start with just behind the door here. Uh, this is just a lot of boxes and bits and pieces. Uh, most of my boxes for things I try to keep because if I ever want to resell them, uh, which I do, uh, People always want the boxes and manuals and things like that with them, especially for things like video cards and, and even things like headphones and stuff as well. So, so I tend to hang on to a lot of the boxes um, just, just so I can end up selling them. Uh, then we've got the main storage unit here. Basically just has a lot of just bits and pieces and some junk on it and a lot of my magazines, Atomic Magazine, some music. Uh, if you watched my original graphics card collection video, I had all my video cards lined up along the top here. Uh, which I ended up having to move over to their dedicated shelf because I just ran out of room, simply. Uh, so what have we got here? So there's just a lot of cathodes, uh, wiring bits and pieces, just things like that that are sitting around because I'm in the process of doing a build at the moment that I'm going to be using them for. Uh, a couple of my other radiators chilling out up the top, uh, some other bits and pieces up there. But I guess the main things that are here, uh, I've got my games, uh, box games and things like that there. I've got some different light globes. Uh, for when I'm filming or when I'm not filming, so I like more of a warm light for, for normal uh, sort of evening time, but then I switch over to the, the white bulbs that I've got in there now for filming. Um, what else is here? All right, my Atomic Magazine collection. Uh, so let me just make sure this is actually in focus. So I have, uh, if you guys are from Australia and you're familiar with uh, the Atomic Magazines, I have uh, pretty much the entire collection one through one uh, number 1 through 143. Uh, I'm only missing issue 57 and I believe one other issue in, I think it's like 31? No, I think it might be 41 actually I'm missing as well. But I have basically just the entire kit uh, of those. I learnt a lot of my um, PC knowledge and things like that through those magazines. Uh, especially a lot of the DIY things like that. Uh, I was actually lucky enough as well to get two of my PCs featured in the hotbox section uh, of the of the magazines as well. I think it was issue 
There's one in the 40s uh, and one in the 80s, but I can't remember which... I can't remember exactly which one off the top of my head. It's been a long time since I've looked at it. I think it was 47, and it should be like Cyborg's Land Box, or Cyborg's Ice Box, or something like that. I think it's issue 47 is the first one, and I can't remember the other one. But anyway, uh, what else is on here? Bits and pieces of cables and, and things like that. Uh, then I have music. Oh, I guess I was talking about the hard drives first. So, these are the different hard drives that I use for the retro builds. Uh, the two in the middle I'm going to be using in a coming up. Uh, build for Windows 98. These are two 30 gig uh, IBM Quantum Fireball drives, IDE drives. Uh, these are like the original, uh, th sorry, these are like the old IDE drives that have a very loud sound to them, that really loud seeking sound that give you that really uh, like audible, yeah, this is an old PC sort of sound, which is really, really cool. I'm looking forward to sort of using those. Uh, I've tested them, they do work really, really well. There's no issues with them at all, so. Um, Perfect for a Windows 98 uh, gaming PC, which is awesome. Uh, then I have my music. Now, this is not. This is basically just the music that I listen to. I actually have several. Uh, in fact, two of the boxes down the. Oh shoot! Out of focus again. Sorry. Uh, two of the boxes that I actually have down there. They are actually full of my other music CDs, things that I just don't listen to anymore. Um, a lot more of my Wild collection and Skits Mix collection that I have. Uh, but these are the ones that I actually listen to a bit, and there's a couple of blank CDs there as well. Um, this is actually from one of my mates. He's actually uh, a DJ slash composer as well. And, well, that's out of focus. Let me just fix that. There we go. Uh, this is one of his first ever CDs that he ever made, and I've always hung on to this because I like the music that's on it, and I listen to it every now and then. Uh, what else have I got here? So here's a deep a dive into my teenage years. So, of course... Red Hot Chili Peppers, absolutely love that album. Silver Chair, Neon Ballroom, that was one of the first CDs I ever bought, and technically I shouldn't have been allowed to buy it, because uh, this was actually MA15 Plus at the time, and I was not of age to buy this CD uh, when it came out. So luckily I, I was very good friends with the guy that owned the music store, and uh, I was lucky enough that uh, he was like, yeah, I know your parents, you're, you're fine, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is a rather funny one in my collection that I always bring out every now and then just for the humor. Uh, it's Ali G's In The House The Soundtrack, which is, uh, if you're familiar with Ali G and, and the, you know, the funny stuff that, uh, that this guy does uh, with his different characters like Ali G, um, good old Mijuli, uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a funny album, it's really, really funny. But most of the stuff that I actually listen to on a day-to-day -day basis, I have some Things like uh, my Cell Dweller, oh that's really bad, but I have uh, like my Cell Dweller albums, I have uh, most of them, I have got a uh, Skrillex album as well, one of his good stuff, I can't remember which one it is, um, four different, sorry, five different Cell Dweller albums, good old Binary Finery, uh, 1998, 1999, uh, I've got the original motion, motion picture soundtrack for The Fast and the Furious, which is uh, the one with the orange, well that's really bad, like, there's one with the orange text, so that's what that one is. Uh, Limp Bizkit, uh, Linkin Park, and then basically just a lot of, uh, the Skits Mix and Wild albums, which are like your dance and trance music from like the, the late, very late 90s, early 2000s and mid 2000s. Um, the white one, the white label there, there's Crazy Town, uh, the Gift of the Game album, that one is probably one of my all-time favourite albums because it has that awesome, um, I mean look at the cover art on this thing. It's awesome. Uh, so this thing has the Butterfly Song by Crazy Town, and if you were familiar with Crazy Town's uh, music before they released that, um, the the Butterfly Song, it was it sort of come out of left field, but it got so popular, and it actually made uh, Crazy Town so much more uh, like recognised because of that Butterfly Song. Like parents would hear that Butterfly Song, uh, and they'd be like, "Oh, who's this? This is awesome music!" And then they'd listen to the other stuff by Crazy Town, and it's like, w uh, w uh, w uh, "What?" Because it just didn't make any sense. It was like the difference between a modern day Linkin Park and the original Linkin Park. It's two totally different types of music almost. So, uh, very interesting. But enough about the music. What else have I got here? Uh, a lot of just bits and pieces. The boxes and stuff that I've got color code. I don't know if you can how well this is going to pick up on the light. But basically I've got uh, grey, red, grey, red, grey, red, grey, red different boxes. Um, and they basically just have a lot of different crap in them. That one's just got packing material and things like that. But this one, this one is full. Oh wow, that's really dark. Hang on. 
This one is just full of fans. Uh, that's 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 all that's in here. It's just there's the whole thing is just chock a block full of different fans from 230 mil all the way down to like 40 mil and 60 mil fans. The majority of what's in there is actually 80. Uh, sorry, uh, 120 mil and two. Sorry, the majority of what's in there is actually 120 mil and 140 mil fans because they're the ones that I use for my different radiators. Uh, then we come around to my main uh, work desk, I guess, and this thing is. Basically just a really, really old computer desk uh, that's broken. It's actually got a fracture. That's why it's a little bit angled there. There's actually a giant fracture underneath the desk. But uh, So whenever I get, like for instance, a video card in from eBay or from someone who's selling it that's like dirty or needs cleaning, this is where I basically just bring it in, strip the card down, do all the cleaning, uh, polish the, the PCB, things like that. Uh, and uh, work on cards. So for instance, there's any issues with capacitors and things like that. I've actually got a soldering iron that I whip out and just sit on the desk and I, I fix it up and things like that as well. Um, this thing is just full of different types of screws and bits and pieces. So for instance, uh, again, sorry for the thing. So there's silver fan screws, radiator fan mount screws, black fan screws. Uh, that's the small threaded screws designed for things like CD drives or, and just smaller it's a small thread so even uh, motherboard mounting screws that's what those are I should probably separate them out into black and silver but anyway uh, then we have silver thumb screws black thumb screws uh, these are the thicker silver screws so like hard drive screws black thick thread hard drive screws um, random miscellaneous uh, miscellaneous miscellaneous bigger screws uh, they're like my that's from an old desk and things like that uh, and down the bottom is basically just random bits and pieces thermal compounds uh, pliers things like that nothing too special uh, now the two tools that I have up the top here probably my two um, main tools that I use for water cooling and PC modding is my nibbler tool so this thing it's got a the clipper on it but this thing basically nibbles away at cases like steel and aluminium cases and stuff there we go uh, so you can see it's got the little teeth there and it nibbles away to make case modding uh, really really easy with just a hand tool but you've got to have a thin a thin case not a thick steel one and then this thing's basically just a pipe uh, like a tube cutter for water cooling tubing uh, not for hard line it's designed for soft tubing basically so that's what that is um, just my main screwdrivers and bits and pieces that I have here Interestingly, this, this one with the rubber handle here, it's actually a little bit bent at the end. That actually was my father's screwdriver. I've actually still got it and still use it because it's really awesome for doing um, like PC work and things like that. It's got the perfect size uh, head on the end of it for, for PC screws and things like that. So, uh, And it's, it's really comfortable because it's got the, the leather, uh, not leather, the rubber end on it as well. Now, they're probably wondering what this video card is sitting all lonely down here in the middle. This is the Triplex Millennium Silver Edition GeForce 4 TI4200. Uh, this is uh, Triplex, if you're not familiar with this company, uh, that's, that's their logo. The little Triplex with a rose in the middle of it. Uh, Triplex is basically a, Chi a North Chinese uh, board partner company for NVIDIA cards and Cryo or Power VR cards. And this is uh, the Millennium Silver Edition cards that they had, is like their special edition cards. Uh, like the Galax Hall of Fame cards for like 1080 Ti's and things like that, the Millennium Silver Edition is is basically the high-end special version of their their normal product line, basically. Uh, and it's called Millennium Silver Edition because you might notice that the PCB it's not white and it's not grey; it's actually silver, like a metallic silver. Uh, yeah, so basically the 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 paint color that's on this is called Millennium Silver. That's actually the name of the paint that's used. Um, and it was some special kind of paint. I can't remember what type of paint it was for or what it was supposed to be for, but uh, they put it on the PCB and these things were incredibly popular because they look, just looked absolutely stunning, uh, especially when you had you know cards from like Asus and, and things like that that were just like that yucky yellow or green. This sort of thing was just Im amazing. The downside was obviously you couldn't get cards like this in Australia. They were sold only in China, I believe, and Korea and for some reason Russia. Uh, also had uh, also sold the triplex cards as well. I'm not sure about the rest of Europe, but I know definitely it was hard to get them in America and hard it was almost impossible to get them here in Australia unless you bought them from a Chinese site and they were happy to ship them to Australia. So what's special about this card in particular is uh, the 
GeForce, uh, this GeForce 4 model version of the card actually has, uh, Triplex did something really unique with the, the GeForce 4 versions, uh, and I believe the GeForce 3 versions as well. The BIOS on this could actually be upgraded to uh, make this card uh, compatible, not compatible, but seem like a GeForce 4 TI 4600. So you could actually uh, unlock the entire core to become a GeForce 4 TI 4600 rather than the 4400. Now the performance difference between the 40, the 4200 and the 4600 isn't a huge margin anyway, even at, even at default speeds, but it was enough that you could overclock this, uh, or basically clock it, and uh, have this card operate as a TI4600, which was really nice. And the previous owner did this to this card, so this thing actually um, shows up in a system as a TI4600, which is incredible, which is really, really nice. But I'm going to be doing a dedicated video on this in a little bit in the future because there's something, uh, some other rare cards of this similar nature that I want to do a video feature on in the future. But this card is really awesome and probably will be the main card that I use in my Windows 98 PC, I, I think. It'll either be this or the GeForce 3 TIE 500, I'm not too sure. Probably this one, I think. Uh, I've got different IKEA lamps and things like that as well. Uh, my old uh, Steel Series Siberia version 1 headphones. These things are probably the most, uh, the, the best headphones you could ever buy if you're wearing glasses, especially if you wear glasses with thick frames, because these things just, they feel like a cloud sitting on your head. There's no pressure on your ears, there's no pressure pushing your glasses into the side of your head, like a lot of, uh, you know, high end headphones have. And these things, while they are open ear, so they're not closed ear, they are, they're really good for music and they're really good for first person shooter games like Counter-Strike where you need to hear that mid-level tone for things like footsteps and things like that. They're absolutely incredible. Uh, probably the best headphones I've ever had for that type of gaming and, and music uh, enjoyment and things like that as well. Uh, I might actually leave this card over here because I'm actually going to do some other photos of that in a minute. Uh, let me come to the video card shelf and let me just make sure this is in focus. Uh, I've got my little lamp here, and normally this lamp is actually on my desk with a, a lot less powerful light globe in it. Uh, but I've got it here because it's really dark in this corner, and I wanted to just make sure you guys could see what's on the shelf here. So, this is the video card shelf, uh, and uh, other bits and pieces. So I've got a couple of motherboards up there, uh, you might recognise them. Uh, this shelf is a bit of a mix at the moment, so it has a bit of... Uh, my NVIDIA and ATI range. I've actually got a couple of new ATI cards I'm wanting to get to fill out the ATI collection I've got. I've actually got the Big Brother version of the 5770. I've actually just got a uh, 5970, so the dual chip card uh, with that awesome uh, ATI cooler that's on it, the, the blower cooler. Uh, then we have the main NVIDIA shelf, uh, and if you might recognize that giant chunky card in the middle, that's one of the other rare ones that I've just uh, picked up as well. So that's actually a limited edition Asus GeForce Extreme N7800 GT Dual. So it's actually a dual chip 7800 GT uh, card. Really unique card. I'm doing a feature video on that one soon as well because that's got some certain technology uh, and had some very specific requirements to even be able to run that card in a PC that I want to talk about. So that's going to feature a really cool uh, video soon as well. Uh, and I picked up a second uh, GeForce 7950GX2 so I can actually test Quad SLI, NVIDIA's first ever version of Quad SLI and how that worked and the details and things like that behind that because it's really, really cool. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a video of that in the future as well. Uh, then we have the main AGP shelf. Uh, and uh, it's just got like, for instance, 9800 Pro, GeForce 3 TIE 500, 9500 Pro, GeForce 2 TI, uh, that's the, the reference 40, uh, GeForce 4 TIE 4600 that's sadly dead. And then the two, oh, that's an MX440, by the way, with uh, eight times AGP and a really nice white PCB by Soltech, that one. These two cards, I've got an MX440 and a GeForce, uh, sorry, a Radeon uh, 9250. That one's PCI, not PCI Express, just PCI, and that one's AGP. I do have a cooler that I put on both of these cards, but these are my test cards. So if I have a motherboard that comes in uh, that I'm not sure it has, uh, like if there's anything might be wrong with it, or uh, you know I'm just not, you know I'm too scared to put any of my good cards in the motherboard for fear of them being damaged, uh, or I'm troubleshooting or anything like that at all, I use these cards basically to test uh, systems before I actually put any good cards in the system at all, just just to make sure I'm covering my bases. Haven't had any issues so far, but yeah. Uh, there's a little box down the bottom there that's actually just got different CPUs in it. 
Uh, so I think there's like two or three Pentium 3 CPUs, there's two Athlon XP CPUs, uh, I believe there's a Pentium 4, uh, 2.8 in there as well, uh, and then there's just bits and pieces of, of uh, other water cooling and, and GPU fans and things like that down the bottom. Uh, so there's really, really nothing that special on that bottom shelf at all. So these two systems here are my main test systems. So I have my, uh, this is my Athlon XP 3200 uh, Plus on my Enforce 2 uh, motherboard. That's basically just for testing AGP cards. Uh, it was originally going to be my main retro system, but I since upgraded to the Pentium 4 system instead. Uh, and uh, it's just using, it's just sitting there basically for, for testing AGP cards when they come in. Uh, and that one's basically equivalently uh, just for testing PCI Express cards. So that's basically a Z77 SLI and Crossfire micro ATX board with an i5, uh, yeah, i5-2400 uh, in it. They're just there for testing video cards. That's really their only purpose. Uh, in fact, neither of them have a power supply in them at the moment because uh, they're just bare bones, nothing really in them. Um, that one's got a sound card in it, and that's about it. Then we come to my main workstation, and uh, I love my little head crab chilling out up there. Uh, I have an old Sony stereo which has dual tape drive and three, uh, like a three-stack uh, CD thing in it because that's what I use to listen to a lot of my music still with. Um, yeah, this is just a very giant IKEA desk uh, that I've got, and uh, my main system is up the top. It's in a state of upgrading at the moment, uh, which is why there's a just a, a reference card in there at the moment. I just took my GTX uh, 970 out because I'm selling it, and I'm actually looking at getting a pair of Kepler uh, Titans in there. I know it's a bit of a downgrade from the 970, but I wanted bigger VRAM, I wanted bigger CUDA support for rendering and things like that because I'm actually looking at upgrading my 1080p monitor to a 1440p and uh, I do know that SLI Titans are a lot better performance than just a single 970. Uh, and because this one has a water block and a back plate, I could just buy a second one of these for cheaper than the two Titans, but getting a matching water block and back plate is near impossible these days. So. Uh, I'm just looking at selling that card and uh, swapping over to the Titans instead because I've actually got a source for water blocks for the Titans. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm getting them really cheap as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, and you can see there's just a, a brain wiring mess going on here. Uh, that's because I have two capture cards. The um, I've got a sound card in there and a lot of USB devices and things like that. So that's just a cable mess nightmare, which is kind of just going down the back and branching out to everything uh, behind here. So it's a bit of a mess, but eh, it's, there's really not much else I can do. And I don't care. It kind of makes the office look a bit techy and nerdy uh, rather than hidden cables and clean. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, so, oh yeah, so I have a 27-inch BenQ and a 19-inch Samsung monitor. That's the desktop of the retro system, which also serves as a secondary monitor for my main PC. Uh, so if I'm watching Netflix and things like that while playing Overwatch, uh, I can do that. But that I'm looking to give this 27 inch I'm looking to give to my partner soon and I'm looking at upgrading to a 27 inch 1440p 144Hz monitor. Uh, something better for gaming because this is only 60Hz and uh, I, I'm well behind the trend when it comes to upgrading to 1440p uh, and 144Hz. So. My, my gaming brain is going, you really need to upgrade, you really need to upgrade, and it's just taking me a long time to finally do it, because I actually like this monitor. Um, oh, there you go, there's a bit of a hint of what I was about to talk about in a minute. So this is my main retro system here, and uh, you can probably tell, with the sound of my voice, that I've got a sound-sensitive uh, LED strip in there at the moment. Uh, normally it's not, I've got it, I think I've got the sensitivity turned a little bit too high. Normally it doesn't activate on voice, uh, but I might have turned it up because I was listening to music a bit quietly. But yeah, so this is my main retro system. It's the Pentium 4 uh, Northwood 3.4 with hyper-threading up uh, overclocked to 3.8. Um, this originally is what, the, the, the guts and hardware of this is what was originally in that case with the full water cooling and that on it. But the water cooling was becoming a bit of a nightmare to sort of maintain and, and things like that. And I wanted to upgrade to this Lian Lee PC-7F uh, W case because this case is just gorgeous. Uh, it's got this incredibly nice uh, brushed aluminum front with the curved intakes. Uh, if I can... There we go. Can I go even higher? I can. 
So yeah, like this thing has this incredible brushed aluminum uh, front on it, which is just absolutely awesome. It's probably my all-time favorite Lian Lee case. Uh, the thing looks incredible. Uh, yeah, so this has the 6800 Ultra. Oh, in focus, sorry. Uh, 6800 Ultra in it at the moment with uh, this 4 gig of DDR OCZ Platinum uh, RAM in there. Now, I do know Windows XP only picks up 3.5 gig because uh, I'm not using 64-bit Windows. I'm only using 32-bit. Um, but that's okay. I wanted to kind of max out the system anyway. Uh, and to be honest, the, um, the four... Oh, I might have taken the other two out, actually. I have. Sorry, my bad. I think the other two are actually... Yeah. So the other two, it's this stuff. Oh. Focus. There we go. So this is what I've actually got in the system. It's the DDR400 uh, OCZ Platinum Edition uh, RAM. Really, really nice RAM. Uh, in the in that system, almost just forgot. I was actually going to show you the uh, the sound uh, LED cathode when it actually is listening to music in the retro PC and what it actually looks like. So I've got some uh, familiar sounding music that I might be very suitable to test this out with. So let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Not much. Oh, Creative Sound Blast. Sorry, yeah, Sound Blaster or Digi ZS2 is the sound card that I have in that, and uh, the different Bay devices. So I've got the uh, Cooler Master Musketeer uh, version two, and I've got a Vantech uh, Nexus uh, that's controlling the CPU fan that's in there, which is a Zalman. Uh, I believe it's the. Oh, I can't remember what number, what, what model number it is, but it's like the 9500, that copper tower cooler. It's basically that, that copper tower cooler that works really, really well for this socket uh, as well, especially for overclocking. Uh, I also have a Phobia fan controller, which controls the case fans in there as well, um, because they're PWM. Standard DVD drive, and that's about it. So thanks for watching the video guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I just want to say sorry that there's been a bit of a break since my last video went up. Uh, it, it has been a little bit busy here, a bit crazy. Uh, and the videos that I was looking at working on for the uh, video cards, I decided to go back to the drawing board with, uh, after doing a bit of research and looking at what have other you know other retro channels are doing and things like that, I didn't want to just give out the exact same information word for word that every other channel had read on Wikipedia. So I decided to uh, go back to the drawing board and re-script and uh, redo the videos and have a different perspective on the the landscape of each video card and its impact it had around at the time and uh, you know things like that just do something a little bit different uh, and just give my thoughts on, on on what was actually happening at you know when a new video card launched and what it was like from my perspective and things like that so thanks for watching the video guys I uh, can't wait to do a couple more uh, coming up very soon I've got a little bit of time on my hands uh, I am actually looking at going in and have my wisdom teeth removed. I haven't had them all removed just yet, uh, so I might actually end up having a bit more downtime in the future towards the end of October uh, to have them removed, uh, but I'll let you guys know, and I'll have a few more videos before that, uh, that time frame anyway. So thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye.